Hi, um, I'm Steve McGough, I'm from Newcastle University, and I think John kind of gave a good introduction of what I'm going to be talking about, because he's talking about the three things that I wanted to talk about. We, we've been working in these signs for the whole time of the project, which is nearly 10 years now, and we kind of came to a realisation that the majority of the sort of scientists that we actually worked with, they tend to want to do the same sort of things. They tend to want to do a lot of the same things. I mean, obviously there's different projects have different end goals they're after, but a lot of the things they were after were in general terms the same. They all had data, they all had information that they collected either from sensors, experiments they were doing, or instruments and things like that. And in general, what they wanted to do with that is they wanted to store that information. They wanted a persistent store of where they could keep all that information for future use. They wanted to analyze that information in some manner. Often when they started analyzing the data, they didn't really understand exactly what they wanted to do with it. So it was fairly much experimental analysis. <clears throat> Once they figured out really what they wanted to do, they wanted to do some sort of automation of that process. So that rather than having to do piecemeal one at a time the data, they could analyze a whole bunch of information together. And then at some stage, and it varies exactly where people want to do it, they want to be able to share that information, first of all with their work colleagues, then with people in the wider community. <clears throat> so we kind of turned it on its head in a sense and said, well, rather than developing almost the same thing for all these different projects, could we actually develop one tool that would allow people in all these different communities to start off with this one piece of software and then move from there? And one of the premises that we built it on was, why not make it all through a web interface? So we can make it as simple as possible for people to use, make it easy for people to actually get access to. <clears throat> and it brought us to the next bit, which is the sort of Venn diagram in the middle there, which was, how do we actually put all this together? What tools do people actually want? Well, there was a lot of interest in the idea of um, social networking. You know, the idea of, you know, you can have friends, you can exchange things with your friends, you can have mutual conversations with particular people you know. You know, you can, you can talk to somebody about what you did at the pub last night, but you don't have to have that information going to your mother. <coughs> um, so we, we brought up the idea of, could you use social networking for this sort of model? So, in a sense, your um, work colleagues become your friends in a sort of social networking sense. Probably some of them are, some of them aren't, but that's, that's irrelevant. <coughs> and you can choose to sort of exchange files with them. You can ex choose to exchange information, so you can say, look, you know, Here's some really interesting analysis I did last night. What do you think of it? Is it complete baloney or have I actually hit something useful? Without having to worry about that information going for very public. <clears throat> the other thing is making, I've got it down as science as a service there. You could say software as a service, research as a service. Try to provide all this stuff for people without them having to actually worry about where it's coming from, what's actually going on. Which then brings the last item in there which is the idea of cloud computing. So again, there's a lot of infrastructure out there that people can use. We didn't want to be in a situation where we had to provide all the computing power to actually do all these things. We just wanted to say, look, there's a cloud out there, people can actually use it. We'll just be the interface for people to actually get access to that. <coughs> so we built up this infrastructure, there's a screenshot of it up there, which obviously a single screenshot is not gonna show you anything useful about it. But the whole idea is, is that all the information that you produce, all the workflows that you develop, all the work you actually do in it, is all stored with provenance information. So we can tell exactly what people have been up to when, when you did done something, when you actually did some analysis, what was the implications of that? You know, if you had a paper that come out, came out from a particular piece of analysis, we'll try and record that information in the system. So that when somebody comes to you in 10 years from now and says, that particular paper that you wrote you know, what was the actual analysis that you did on it? And hopefully they can go back through something like this and pull out that information. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to actually say about it. There's some example groups of people that we've actually used this with. And we're, we're keen to sort of develop other use cases for this. We're, we're constantly talking to people about how we can actually take this further. Thank you.